Hey, happy, 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 beautiful, amazing day. Dr. Bob Rakowski here, April 27 of 2020 with our SARS COVID-2 update. Uh, what I'm showing there is a picture of the Great Divide, and there really seems to be a phenomenal division going on there uh, in our wonderful world. So what's this all about? So um, you know, the people that I hang with say, you know what, I feel good about making informed decisions for myself and for my family in terms of social distancing and wearing a mask and whether or not to get vaccines or micro trip, microchipped. Uh, and then another side says, no, I prefer that political, political organizations make these decisions because for crying out loud, these are really, really, really harsh times. Uh, I think I'll address that tomorrow, but you know, every hundred years, you have a hundred year storm. Every hundred years, you have a hundred year pandemic. So you know, here's, I guess, the ultimate, right? People should have the right to choose or people should be forced to follow a particular program. Sweden has gotten a lot of press. And this was one of the article, it says it's game over and the Swedish model, herd immunity model has won. So um, here's what this article says. Herd immunity is the way to go. Random testing shows that 600,000 or one third of Stockholm County's population has had the corona infection. Most of them had no symptoms at all or very, very mild. Uh, and that led to a mortality rate of about 0.25%. Now understand we're seeing that in San Francisco, we're seeing that in Southern California, we're seeing that in New York, we're seeing that in Germany, we're seeing that in big models. Uh, they did not shut down their economy. They did not force people to any particular type of behavior. Uh, my great friend, Peter Wilhelmsson in Sweden and his beautiful wife, uh, Rochelle, uh, that's just a fun picture of them. But here's what Peter said, and I, I find him so wise. He says, if deaths are statistics, well, then this isn't a problem. But if your loved one dies, you know, that is a big problem. Uh, and so I feel very, very blessed that I don't have a single loved one that's dealing with this uh, in terms of illness, but I do have loved ones that are on the front line. And I can tell you they're stressed out of their minds. So this is a very bad virus. It certainly is. And then there are certain people that are much more vulnerable and those appear to be, first and foremost, those that are of advanced age, right? We can even call them elderly. So you look at, uh, you know, Italy, average age of death, 79.5. Massachusetts, average age of death of 81. We want to protect uh, our senior citizens. We want to protect our frontline workers. But for those of us that are strong, we now know that people that have the bug and beat it, they can donate plasma and they can help. There seem to be other medications that can help as well. And by the way, if history repeats itself, this thing will be long gone before any vaccine is proven, no matter how much they're fast tracking it. So death rate, the economists say we can predict it very, very accurately. Again, since 1950, very smooth line of death rate. This was the end of uh, 2019, 7.579 per 1,000 people. Maybe it was projected to get a little increase, and that's what we have, like you know, one death per 10,000, but here are the exact numbers. Uh, world Worldometer looked at it. Here's our population. Here's our number of deaths. You see those numbers here, population, uh, number of deaths. What was projected at the death rate? A very close number within 20,000. If it were last year's death rate, if it went up one person per 10,000, we would be right on the numbers. So is this coronavirus wiping out the population like they expected. Well, Nobel laureates are saying no, and it never even looked that way because like all pandemics, this one rises and falls. Interesting comparison. Uh, this was a, a reference here that said that basically 54% of Brits are doing nothing in terms of the response for the coronavirus. But let's compare then London versus New York. Uh, both beautiful cities. I've been to them. I've got great friends in both. Uh, very resilient population, but hey, that we're talking about population density. London has nearly a million more people than the city of, of New York. Uh, we don't have London statistics straight up, but we do have New York City straight statistics straight up, and we have New York State straight, uh, straight up statistics. New York State has a 13.9% projected infection rate. 
I gave all of uh, Great Britain a zero, uh, basically a 5% uh, rate, much, much less, right? Almost uh, about one third the rate of New York City. What did New York say of the probable infections? Almost 2.7 million. I'm just giving 3.3 in London. Reported death rate in New York, 7.6%. Uh, in London, much, much, much higher reported death rate, but what's real? Uh, you know, uh, about four in a thousand deaths in New York City and about six in a thousand in London. That's what the data is suggesting if we truly knew how many people were infected. Uh, so again, the data is not bearing out that this is gonna kill everybody but it certainly is pretty rough on people that are really vulnerable. So if you're vulnerable, protect yourself. If you're a frontline worker, protect yourself. Uh, if you are healthy, be very, very smart. The best thing any of us can do is stay healthy. Then we don't throw ourselves in the front line and we create herd immunity. Hey, I didn't say it'd be easy, but I said it'd be worth it. People in my circle especially say, you know what, I want the freedom to choose. That's what I think is best for me and my family. We've made good health choices. Why should we be thrown in the same camp as people that haven't paid any attention to their health? Interesting philosophy, isn't it? I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski, absolutely knowing that we can all be happy, healthy, and successful.